Hello to my Pisces rising besties. Welcome to your May horoscopes. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about listing off the most important transits of the month and what you can expect. And at the end, I'm gonna pull a tarot card as advice for the month of May. Let's hop right in. So let's start Monday, May 1st. This is when Pluto stations retrograde and there is a Mercury Kazemi in Taurus. Let me get to your chart. All right, so. Pluto will be stationing retrograde in your 12th house, and this is an emotional cleanse. You might find yourself diving into your subconscious a bit more than usual on May 1st, facing old fears, facing old issues that you've been avoiding, or just spending more time alone in general. It's a great day or week for therapy, for journaling, or any type of self-help that helps you process and release subconscious things that start to come out. Pluto likes for us to shed whatever we can, whenever it does anything. And on the same day, Monday, May 1st, we have that Mercury Kazemi in Taurus. A Mercury Kazemi in your third house means that your communication game is on fire. So you'll be chatting up a storm, easily connecting with others, and your mind is going to be buzzing with ideas. And so reach out to friends, network, and or start the blog you've been thinking about or podcast, just remember to pause and listen sometimes too. If you have it in you, meditating on May 1st would be highly beneficial. And now we're gonna move on to May 5th. Friday, May 5th, we have a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. That 14 degrees Scorpio. So there's a lunar eclipse in your ninth house, which you can expect shifts with your beliefs and your perspectives, the way you've been thinking about things, your worldview. You might question old assumptions or explore new ideas, either through school or just self-study, or even planning a big trip is supported. The lunar eclipse here is all about broadening your horizons, so embrace adventure and be open to change over the next six months. Lu eclipses generally uh, unfold over the next six months. It's not usually something that happens that day, though this is a full moon in Scorpio, so I imagine it'll be emotional at um, the very least. But again, this eclipse is all about spirituality, all about travel, all about the way you've been thinking about something, and just education and learning. So who knows what sort of exciting discoveries you'll make for this lunar eclipse in your adventure house. All right, next, I wanna talk about Sunday, May 7th. This is when Venus enters Cancer. And this is like, oh my God, just so exciting. I love Venus entering your fifth house. You're gonna really, really enjoy that. Um, so, what can you expect when Venus enters Cancer on Sunday, May 7th? We have Venus entering your fifth house, which brings a whole lot of love and fun into your life. You'll be feeling extra flirty, extra romantic, which could definitely attract some new admirers or spice up a current relationship. It's also a fantastic time for creative projects as you will feel, be feeling way more inspired than usual. So go ahead. Plan some fun dates and dive into a new creative hobby when Venus enters Cancer. Um, that's one of the best transits of the month for you, for sure. And then on a week later, on Sunday, May 14th, we have Mercury stationing direct at 5 degrees Taurus, and this will be in your third house, and this is like the ultimate clarity boost for communication for y'all. So any misunderstandings you have will most likely begin to clear up and you'll be able to express yourself a lot easier with this station. So um, around May 14th, you can tie up any loose ends in conversations, you can finalize plans and enjoy smooth sailing moving forward. You've definitely got this whole communication and travel thing down by the time Mercury is done retrograding in your third house. And then the next day or two days later, Tuesday, May 16th, Jupiter enters Taurus, and this is my favorite transit of the year. Jupiter will be in Taurus for the next 12 months, and so it will be in your third house for the next year. It's a, it will bring a mega expansion to your social life and to your mind. 
you'll be making new connections, you'll be learning a lot more, and your curiosity will be off the charts. You'll probably be finding a lot more joy in your neighborhood and immediate environment. Just be mindful about not spreading yourself too thin or getting lost in like endless debates. Balance is key, my friend. Now we're gonna move on to Friday, May 19th. That is when there is a new moon at 28 degrees Taurus. So this is our, our last third house event I'm gonna talk about. And this is hitting the refresh button on your communication and your learning and your immediate environment. So this new moon is a great time to set intentions for new projects, new friendships, or any type of learning goals that you have. Maybe taking up a new hobby, buying that car, buying that computer, or signing up for that online course are all supported. Um, really enjoying your roommates, really enjoying your siblings or your cousins, or maybe your siblings or your cousins are getting pregnant, something like that. Um, this is a great time to light a candle with the intention to manifest anything related to your mind, mental health, learning, um, also manifest anything to do with your immediate environment or your roommates or your cousins or something like that. Okay, now I want to talk about the most challenging transit of the month, and that is Saturday, May 20th. That is when Mars enters Leo. And Mars and Leo itself is pretty awesome. I love Mars and Leo. It's way better than Mars and Cancer. But um, when it ingresses, it opposes Pluto. So the first initial ingress will have a little bit of a bump in the road, most likely. Mars will be entering your sixth house and Mars loves being in the sixth house. Mars finds its joy there. So um, your workload might increase, but it will be work that you can easily do. And with increased activity at work could bring increased challenges or conflicts, but this is mars brings chances for you to take your power back for you to prove your strength to be determined to tackle tasks head on um, but what's easy to forget when mars is in your sixth house is taking care of yourself don't overdo it burnout is not your friend okay so mars will be here for a while um and we need to make sure we can uh not burn out by the end of it all right, last thing I wanna talk about. Gemini season starts on Sunday, May 21st, and the sun will be entering your fourth house, and that shines a big old spotlight on your home and family life and your foundation. So you'll be extra uh, focused on making your space comfy or spending time with loved ones or people you're close with, chosen family. Um, so enjoy game nights, family dinners, or redecorating sessions. Home is where the good vibes are during Gemini season for y'all. So let's see what the card has to say for May. Queen of Summer, how cute. So the Queen of Summer is loving, is comforting, is very emotional, and very intuitive. This is a card that tells you to listen to your heart. It's a card that tells you your intuition is very strong and you can trust your insights your intuitive insights regarding whatever issue happens this month um, it's also a card that that says that you're really good at taking care of others and you perhaps take care of others too much on some level um, to, so much so that burnout happens or so much so that people start calling you mommy or daddy mm -hmm. so Things to remember, we want to harness the Queen of Summer energy. We want to be loving. We want to be comforting. We want to be emotional, and we want to harness our intuition. The card says to listen to your heart this month. The card says that you can trust your intuition this month, and um, you may have to take care of others on some level. So that's what we have. If you want some more information, you can go ahead and check the link in the description head to my website, join the Discord community to talk to a bunch of cool mystical folks uh, about astrology, tarot. I love teaching people there more about what's happening. Um, I also do weekly written horoscopes and I do monthly um, horoscope, personalized horoscopes. So check all the stuff out, join um, my portal, and thank you so much for being here. Comment below if you have any questions and I will see you next time.